the the army that you joined and the army of today are there any similarities there are a few things which have gone wrong and they, you will pay a price well yesterday i was watching tv some one of the stations talking about same time i'm talking about the cap the 70 what this this payment bonus they pay people when they retire mm. and civil service was saying that they have to amend their amend their terms of uh, whatever to pay them a better remuneration when you look at what i was a uh, brigadier 1977 as a brigadier there must have been four or five brigadiers maybe two, two commodores for the navy and therefore maybe not more than 10. today you can't maybe 150 or more and government today pays them to retire on their salary. You get me what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They retire on their salary. In my time, my chief of defense staff retired on his salary. Now what COP mentioned yesterday on TV, he retires on his salary. Or the police too. Which government, not even American government, can pay people to retire? Hey, I retired 19, 1979, 44 years ago. I've been I've doing pension ever since. There are many more who are coming. How can government find the money to pay them their remunerations as pensioners? Well, you so many ranks. The army size hasn't changed, but the ranks have become bigger and more expensive. So you will not be able to manage the economy of the country. You, you won't be able to do it. Mm. So I'm told the IMF bought us some money. I'm, do you know how much they bought us? Well, 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 we signed for three billion, and the first installment came in not uh, for half a billion. As the money come, what are they doing with the money? The roads are still pretty, pretty bad. You know, I get very sad. So where's the money? Are you saying a tampon didn't take one person off from anybody? In fact, he refused to honor Ghana's debts, and I am a World Bank. You no, know, said to hell with you. He didn't ask for any. A tampon did so much. If you could have done so much, where's the money we have been getting? Where's the money going? This is a very serious question we have to ask. You also said that uh, hunger and joblessness is forcing the youth to go into the army. What was your motivation to join the Ghana Army? Uh, I, I, <clears throat> I had a history of military service in my family. My father's cousins, 2007, the Second World War in Burma. And uh, Major, one Major Kirsten, Major Aqua, who was killed with the judges, they were about three years older than me. They were in the military. So I had this history of, so when I was leaving school, and thankfully, about early 1960, I didn't go to school early. I was, you know, I, I was a grown up. Officers from the military academy came, Major, Major Kilminster, sorry, Captain Kilminster, um, Sal, uh, Salibras, I mean, I knew them. I still remember their names. Came to the army, came to the school, and talked to us. That those who were interested oh, to join the army. Like the careers promoting, exactly. promoting their work. Yes, that's careers. right. That's was, that right. An, was that a usual thing for people, professionals from whatever? I was surprised. Uh, because, I was the reason why Nkuma actually had begun to set up Ghana Military Academy. Mm. We didn't have one. So very limited numbers were being recruited. The best I knew, the Gawans, the Ashilasans, the Jananka, and very few people. They were trained here? Yes. Obas and Joe and all? They were trained at the, at the then in, in, Ross, Ghana. in Ghana. Oh, really? Before they continued abroad. Okay. All right. Britain set up this uh, school mm -hmm. in Teshi, mm -hmm. where the West Africans, Ghanaian, Nigerians, so on, came to. To be trained le, here. Where, before they actually went to Britain for okay. further studies. Okay, okay. But the Nkuma had bloated the army. He wanted to, to remove the, the British officers. We are independent now. So he needed more young people to come to the army. So a team went around the country. To school to, from school to school, talking to the form, form five, those who are going to leave school, the army was a good career. So they came to Winneba and I listened to them. I thought it was a good career. I didn't know where to go anyway if I hadn't gone, <laughs> gone to the army. What, where do you think you would have been if you hadn't joined the army? What I were your career prospects looking like? I I'll, I'll try to go to university. I mean, I did well, I had grade one, mm -hmm. first time in Winneba Secondary School. You know, grade one. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't a fun. But I look at my background, financial background. I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I couldn't go to school. I couldn't pay. So it was like a, a wonderful thing. I had this opportunity to, and to enlist into it. Otherwise, I would have gone to try to get into a, a search form. Mm. As like I'm saying, I, well, I've had difficulty. 
parents were too poor to look after me. I'd have suffered to do it. So basically, you joined the army and you get a career and then they yes. will pay for your education. Yes, 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 yes. Mm. And it was a wonderful career. Where was the first country you traveled to outside of Ghana? Great Britain. Okay. Signed in 1961. For your training, for two years. For, for two, two years. years. It was where, a wonderful thing. Where yeah. else have you been in your army career? From there, I went to Russia. I came back in 63. Mm -hmm. Went to Russia in 19... October 63. Mm -hmm. I came in August. Mm -hmm. Sent to Sakurai. I was there once and I had a call to come to Accra. And uh, I mean, I told him my choice to go to British intelligence. But Accra was there, a cousin of mine. But he knew how intelligent I was. So I was brought in there. Then we flew to Moscow. That was a quick turnaround. You came yes. out from the UK not yes. too long. No, and about two you, months. And then you turned out yes. to Moscow. What was Moscow like? Oh, Moscow has changed a lot. I mean, since, since we were there, it was a fantastic. It was communist. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, life was pretty, pretty hard. Very rough. So did you go to understudy the KGB or what? We, we were doing a private course. The KGB officers were instructing us and training with them in Moscow, doing all kinds of uh, surveillance and so on in Moscow, you know, working with them for six months. What was your highlight of your, your Moscow training? Oh, we went to uh, the place called Almata, Almata, Kashkent. Mm -hmm. And spent about, two, about a week there. I remember when we went there, we went to a place that makes uh, champagne. Oh, really? And <laughs> 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 if you ask Mr. Gore, he will tell you. I mean, I never, I never drink. I don't know what happened. And I just quaffed more and more champagne and more or less, you know, broke down. What were you doing? Dancing, shouting? Singing? No, no, just, just completely collapsed. And <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> I remember that very well. Champagne, you just boom, boom, cheers. And, and not knowing that, it's, it's worse than, it's mild, but it, it can knock you down and that will end up. You never tried the vodka? The famous no, vodka? I didn't like vodka. I like appetite. Mm, appetite. The champagne is mild, mm. but it just gets you drunk, totally drunk. Mm. But a wonderful experience. So six months in Russia? In Russia. And then you, and then when you came back to 64. Mm -hmm. 64, then, when again? Um, but that travel. Then, of course, there was a coup in 66. Yes. And then Kumar overthrown, and the, the MI was uh, completely disbanded. Disbanded. I'd explain with Kutaka. You don't know Kutaka, but you heard about him. His name but, is on our airport. Yes. And, but this, this but you met him personally. Who? You knew Kutaka personally. Yes. And uh, there's an incident which, which happened between me and Kutaka. You see, everything I did, I may have done something wrong. But it wasn't done with an intent mm -hmm. to do some wrong. In 1964, or 65, thereabout, then Major Hamidou was in charge of what they call counterintelligence. He was in Britain attending the court. I was acting for him. And we used to send reports, what they call moral reports, every month to see our defense staff to how the soldiers, how things were moving within the country, militarily. One of the reports I signed. It was a critical of, of then Kenya Kutuka. And I sent him a copy. To Kutuka himself? To Kutuka himself. Okay. I don't know why I did it, but I just felt that what I was saying, negatively about it, you should know about it. You should it. know, okay, to be prepared. I didn't think it was that. I, know it was. I just that. Then Kutuka then leads a coup that overthrew from Koma, 24th February. 25th February, there was a shooting at Alabama camp. Kutuka calls me. I didn't know why he called me to go and see him. I mean, I was marching to his office. I was a little concerned. But I thought that removing Kuma was a major, major enterprise. And for him to have time to call me at that time, you know, it worried me. So when I got into his office, the place called A Branch in Birmingham, I hadn't met him face to face before, but he knew me. Then he asked me two questions. Why did I write that report? And why did I send him a copy? At that time, what was your rank? I was a captain. So you were a junior to him? Very junior. Yes. Very junior. Mm. But you see, the army is a wonderful profession. I keep on saying this. We don't have, if I did wrong, I'm human. But I didn't have any intention to harm anybody. So, so you wrote a report on your senior which had uh, negative. negative implications and sent him a copy of the yes. report. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm trying to see how that will happen in, in civilian it life. It never happen. <laughs> in fact, even in the army, it was unusual. I don't know why I did it. So. <laughs> So when he called me and asked me, what do you rather report? Send me a copy. And I sent me a copy, sir. I wanted you to know what was being said about you. 
It's okay. Go. It's satisfy you. I send a copy. Then I what is right. But I say I want you to know about what's being sent, done or said about you negatively. You were you were you were with it. But I never felt that bad. I never felt but I I determined that I should leave the army, resign from the army. When he was killed, how did you feel? You know, these murders, they were, they were just terrible. I mean, going through terrible. I don't have hatred for any human being. I don't have never hated anybody. But when the year after, on 17th April 1967, right, Arthur and Yaboa did what they did. Therefore, I had a lot of respect for Arthur's courage. A young officer, when I put on trial, what the thing he said, See, these officers, some join the army just to go and make money. Some join them because they have certain gifts of God. He was a very brave young man. It wasn't Atta who killed the Kutuka, it was Yaboa. Who, and I'm surprised that these young officers could do what they did. Go to Flagstaff, arrest uh, Kutuka. What was the, the security doing there? They were able to march him to the airport and, you know, and shot him dead. It was terrible. I, are you some of those, one of those people who feel, mm, listen, because I've heard the stories, about, I've heard sentiments about why we should name our airport after the gentleman who overthrew um, Kwame Nkrumah. So this that is, this if anybody drops into the, into the country, the first thing they see is Kotokan International Airport. Is it written there? Yes, it's Kotokan International Airport. That's the name of our The airport. new one or the old airport? It's Kotoka. I've not seen it. I know. It's there. It's Kotoka International Airport. Are you sure it's written? Have you seen it with your own eyes? I have seen it with your own Kotoka International Airport. Terminal 3 is just the terminal, but that's the name of our airport. It's Kotoka International Airport. I don't know what I have to go and take special look. All right. But to name it after him, I think I wasn't part of that decision. How do you feel about it, though? I was in Canada when the name built and named the airport. I can understand the sentiment, you know. Well, the body was found there. Mm. But that didn't mean that it should be named after him. But this naming after this and that, it didn't really bother me. That mm -hmm. Is he considered the hero in the army, Kutuka? Who knows about Kutuka? Not many people knew him. Mm. Not many people knew him. I mean, the, that generation of officers, mm. the Kutuka, the Alphonse, Alphonse, Alphonse uh, Carter, Carter. And then two Berema and eight Aqua, two Aqua. They've almost all run out. Oh, yeah. In fact, only Ashelasen. He's alive. Kukai Pia, I'm Kukai Pia. Kukai Pia is alive. Ashelasen. Maybe what is not more than five. Mm. Alive. Today, alive today. So mm. when I'm gone, a whole generation have gone. is passed. In the, in the rivers of time. You know.